revelation what? The revelation of Jesus Christ. Revelation 1 is the most important chapter in the book of Revelation. It's revealing this awesome work that God is doing through a body that He has prepared to bring us back and restore us to our total redemption, bringing us to perfection. We need to understand the revelation of Jesus Christ. The last chapter, the last two chapters is bringing us to the kingdom, but it all starts in Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who was, who is, and who is to come. From the seven spirits of God, what? It takes us right back to Genesis 1. Seven days, God's Spirit is working. Come on, this is what, what Moses saw on the mountain. The goodness of God passing him by when he asked for the glory. And we know God says, my glory will fill all the earth. He said it. I don't think he was very happy because they didn't want to take the promised land. They said, oh, these people are like grasshoppers. God said, as sure as I live, my glory will, will fill the earth. And Moses wrote and he said, it was good, it was good, it was good, it was good because it was the goodness that passed by grace and mercy. But where we are now is what Habakkuk prophesied. And he says, write the vision that those that read, they will run because the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of God. And this is why we need to understand Revelation and have this knowledge of what's going on here. <laughs> Sorry, I love the word. And from Jesus Christ, who is the faithful witness. <laughs> come on. The witness who was, who is, and who is to come. And the most difficult chapter about the witnesses is, is Revelation 11. Well, I'm going to do it later, but I'm going to throw it in here. It starts with measure the temple and it's only the holies of holies because the outer court and the inner court is now done away with. You can read that back in Hebrews 9. He says <laughs> everything is changing because the first is now the inner court because the outer court is done away with. You've got to read it in Hebrews 9 verse 1 and 2. And now in Revelation 11, he only sits and he measures the city. And we know the city is also the measurement is given in Revelation 22. He says, it's a measure of a man, 144 cubits, meaning 144,000. 144,000 is God's government. We will get to that. It is not just a certain group of people. It's secluded. No, it means God's government is in place. Guys, get it. A child is born. A son is given. The government is on his shoulders. Can you see it? That's the cross. <laughs> God's government is in place. 12 in the old, 12 in the new, 24 elders. Wow. 12 times 12 times 1,000, which is perfect, means God's government is in place. Now, Jesus was the faithful witness. And then he goes on to the two witnesses in Revelation 11. And... Um, it looks like it's Moses and Elijah. It is Moses and Elijah. And then he says, these two are lying dead in the streets of Sodom and Egypt where the Lord was crucified. Oh my word, Sodom and Egypt. Israel became like Sodom. Deuteronomy 32 in the Song of Moses. <laughs> they became like Egypt. They were abomination. And the law and the prophets made no sense in Jerusalem for three and a half years. They lay dead in the streets of Jerusalem. Don't go look for people lying dead somewhere. It's all spiritual. And then they were caught up with him. <laughs> Jesus did not annul the law and the prophets. He fulfilled them. And when he ascended, their purpose went up with him. And that is what is poured out on us. So when we become the witnesses... <laughs> We are the witnesses of what the 12 apostles of the Lamb 
We're witnesses of they were the foundation stones in the new Jerusalem. And all of that is now on us because do you not know that we are the building of God <laughs> and we don't build on any foundation but Jesus Christ. And if you build with rubbish, the fire comes and burns it, but you will be saved. Now he says in Isaiah, the water or the fire will not. <laughs> we have to build a house on the rock. And where the house is built on the rock, there God is building his house. Oh my word. It all comes together in this awesome book of Revelation. Is that not awesome? And he says, And Jesus the Christ, who is the faithful witness, the first begotten of the dead. When Jesus was baptized, there's a voice when heaven opened. There's a cloud and a voice and thunders. And he says, this is the only begotten. When he came from the dead, he's the first begotten, the first of a new generation man. He done away, done away with Adam. No more Adam. The first man, Adam, became a living soul. The second man. The last Adam now became a quickening spirit. So from Christ, anybody can be born again. How be it? The first is natural, then comes the spiritual. Don't let anybody come and put you back into Adam. We, after, after Christ, we are a new generation species of man. Oh my word, I love preaching. And now, he says, he's the first begotten of the dead, the prince of the kings of the earth. For the first time, we are called kings. Adam was a king. Then he lost his rulership. God gave Noah a covenant. He said, be fruitful and multiply. No rulership. Then in Abram, this nation was called and they were to be a kingdom of priests. And you know what they did? They actually rebelled against the calling. They said, we want a king. This is why they were taken to the biggest kingdom on earth and it marked the removal. It marked the point of their removal because God gave them chances over and over and over. But they succumbed to all their wicked kings. And then God, <laughs> Jesus came in as the king. And Pilate said, should I crucify your king? And they screamed at him, we have no king but Caesar. So after the cross, listen, listen to this. He's the prince of the kings of the earth. Unto him who loved us and washed us from our sins. And he made us kings and priests. And to God and his Father, to him be glory forever. At the cross, he made us kings. 70 AD was the grace that opened the kingdom for us. For the new could not come while the old was still a recognized institution. Isn't the word wonderful? One night... I, I, I can remember it so clearly. Um, we were in bed and I looked at Clovis and he was reading the word and he held it like that and he kissed the word. I turned around and said, hey guy, it's time to kiss me. <laughs> Don't kiss the word now, kiss me. But I never realized what this man carried. And now I found I'm kissing the word. You know, Psalm 2 says, kiss the sun. And the word is, is spirit breathed and it's like embracing Christ when you understand the revelation of Jesus Christ. You cannot but kiss the word.